Welcome to another episode of the, the Epic, Epic Family, Family Road, Road Trip, Trip, the Empty Nest Edition. Guys, we are back on the road and we look forward to taking you with us. But this week's episode starts in Ontario at the cabin. Ready, Lando? Come on, let's go. So I'm doing one final walk with Lando around the island. We normally do this a few times a day. But um, we decided to leave Lando with um, Dan. I think it'd be better for him. And we got a phone call from Pete, as you know, is in Africa. And he said, can uh, Lando be there when I arrive home? So we said yes to that. But uh, yeah, so it'll be interesting not having him running out in front of us. And for me, not having him on all the walks and just around. But I think it he'll have a lot of fun with Daniel and with Pete, who comes home in about two weeks. Love you. Have a good time. Come on to see Lando. Love you, bud. Take care, eh? Mm -hmm. Be safe. Keep your Zolio with you. Mm -hmm. Alone in the wilderness. Part <laughs> two. Love you. It kind of feels weird mm. leaving uh, Dan and Lando. Yeah. I don't know what that feeling is just yet, but. No, especially all alone, but he's a very capable young man. He's got a Jeep, he's got a, his own cabin. He's in good hands. He's in good shape. And he has Lando. And he's got Lando. On the road. This is crazy. I gotta stop here, though. It's uh, probably the best thing, you know, for a young man. He's 19 to uh, be truly alone. He's, he's always had his, you know, his parents are nearby or his brother or sister. So this. Um, just forces you to into a new layer of responsibility, which is a very healthy thing. So, have fun, Dan. We already miss you. We just left. <laughs> nah. Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, crossing into Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, and it is uh, 5:30. So we still have a couple hours left in you of yeah. driving. Oh yeah, for sure. So we'll just we're gonna head right along the bottom of Lake Superior towards Duluth and uh, find a place to camp for the night if we can, and uh, well, we'll find something and carry on. We're gonna really push hard just to get west, get to Montana. And then uh, we'll go south from there. So we made it into the States and we're in Michigan. Feels kind of good to be back in the States. It does. It's been a good year and a half, pretty much, right? I guess we came through in May of 22. So. Here in a couple of months. Are these just little jet ins or? I guess. Um, it's not an overlander spot. I think you can camp anywhere. I'm just going to where they where they camped. We'll check it out. Not 
sure if there's any. I haven't seen any yet. Anything that looks like a camp spot. There's that some, looks that like looks something. That looks not too bad there. I don't want to keep going too far because we're just going to go on the highway yeah. as soon as possible. You want to go ahead at all or try this? Um, maybe a little bit. So we just pulled into camp and boy am I tired. It wasn't a long drive or anything like that. I think it was around five hours with and then some stops, so seven hours or so. But five hours of driving. Um, this is pretty. I'm happy we found this. Lots of wildflowers everywhere. And it was just kind of a nice surprise. Um, but I'm gonna go to bed early. I think Pete's gonna stay up just a little bit later, just relaxing and going over our route. But anyways, I'll see you guys in the morning for coffee. Good morning guys, we're getting a relatively early start back on the road, but uh, had a great sleep there, very quiet in the forest, and uh, we are navigating to the first coffee shop, that's the most important thing right now, we'll get a coffee and then we'll uh, get going west, we've got a long ways to go, and a short time to get there. As you know, we're in the Upper Peninsula of uh, Michigan. Beautiful area, looks like the kind of place we'd want to explore a little more of. We found this little breakfast joint, Earl E. Birds. Let's go get some brekkie. All right, we had a delicious breakfast and we are now getting back on the road, but this little town of Munising, I think it is, Munising, Michigan, right on Lake Superior. Absolutely beautiful. Tons of quaint little uh, restaurants and looks like a neat place to visit and you can kind of tell when you're the people there were eating breakfast the kind of excited tones um, you know everybody's on vacation here <laughs> so we can't stay we've got to keep moving on but kind of town we'd come back to what a beautiful day oh, Lake Superior's amazing We've done north of Superior, and uh, this is south of Superior. A lot of sandy beaches on both sides of the lake. Beautiful. Water. It's like 
bath water. Nice. Super clear and just oh, beautiful. I wish we could stay. We gotta hit the road. Minnesota. Next state up, North Dakota. Alright, it's 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock our time because uh, we came back an hour uh, going through a time zone there. But uh, we're pretty tired. We've been driving since about uh, 6 this morning. And uh, we've come a long ways. We're just about in uh, into North Dakota, like 10 minutes from North Dakota, but there's a, a state park here and we thought, we called them and they're pretty empty. So we thought it'd be nice to just camp here. There's not much else. We'd have to go a couple hours past Fargo and uh, we don't feel like driving too much more tonight. So yeah, this uh, looks like a beautiful little state park, right? Pretty much on the boundary of Minnesota and North Dakota. This is a beautiful camp spot that we're at with this river in the background. Um, it's been a while actually since we've camped in like a state park. Um, and it's different from wild camping, uh, but it is beautiful and it has, you know, different trails and things to do. So like if you had teenagers, this is probably a better place than like say a KOA with younger kids. It's really cozy. It's just been nice to just spend time with feet, have conversations in the Jeep for hours on end. We've been talking to Dan, Pete, Caroline the whole time. They're all doing well. So tomorrow we'll be crossing into the Dakotas, North Dakota. I'm pumped about that. I love North Dakota. Anyways, thanks for the walk guys. I had fun chatting with you and I'll see you tomorrow. talk to you guys about that but we came on this trip with absolutely nothing just a little styrofoam cooler to keep our snacks cool and things like that we didn't bother bringing any kitchen stuff um, jet boils for baking coffee etc because everything we have is a, a duplicate of everything we own is out there in Montana in the trailer and the last thing we wanted to do is pack more stuff in fact this trip is really a mission to go collect all the stuff we have spread out all over the U.S. and and bring it bring it home. So 
we came uh, empty-handed. That's why we're we're looking for coffee shops and breakfast places right now. Rather, normally we'd make our own, as you know. So yeah, we're about uh, 12 hours drive from Bozeman, so we might push all the way through. That's without stops. So we might push all the way through, or we might stop somewhere. In I have a feeling we're gonna Florida. stop somewhere because I just love from North Dakota going into Montana. Yeah. So. It's really hard not to stop and stay there. But first, coffee. Yes. So we're making our way across North Dakota, and uh, a friend of ours, Dr. John, and his wife Agnes, they, uh, you may know Dr. John from the EXO uh, episodes. He's the expedition doctor. He's the guy that sewed up uh, Dan's finger when he cut it up there in Alaska. And um, he was just in Africa with Pete on the first part of the uh, African trip. And um, he lives, him and his wife live here in North Dakota. So we texted them last night and sure enough, they're, uh, they're both home today. So they invited us over for a coffee this morning. So we're really looking forward to uh, having coffee with them before continuing west. So let's go uh, say hi to Dr. John. Good to see you. Yeah, welcome. Thanks yeah. for stopping. Oh, that's fine. We already introduced you as the guy who sewed up the Oh, great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, come on in. visit. I just love them. And we're leaving with lots of fresh produce, which is good. Tons of stuff. And awesome Local. ideas. I yeah, and a map. We have a map <laughs> and we've gone over the map. We're gonna we don't have enough time to give North Dakota, especially the Badlands area, full a full tour, but we're gonna find a camp spot in there and uh, that way we can experience it a bit and then we're determined to come back and uh, explore it more especially if the boys have their bikes oh i think with their motorcycles it would be amazing but yeah i got really excited going over the maps um with dr john and his wife and before we left we had just watched uh sorry just uh, rocking onto the street we had watched a documentary on uh, theodore roosevelt and this is his favorite was his favorite part of the world and in fact he was so instrumental in forming most of the uh, national parks and so uh, it's kind of fun to go to this whole area and explore so but uh, John and Agnes dr. John and dr. Agnes thank yes. you so much for the incredible time at your place we really appreciate it Thank you. 
<laughs> so our friend Dr. John said if you are kind of crunched for time, and we are because we're heading west, he said at least do the loop uh, drive through Theodore Roosevelt National Park, and then you kind of get a feeling for the lay of the land. Someone said the north section is really cool as well and we'll have to do that next time because it's about an hour and a half drive north to get there but for now we're just going to drive through this section we've been by here three or four times over the years and never really stopped to do the loop so it's just a paved loop but it'll be cool so we got ourselves the uh, park pass because uh for 30 bucks you you get access to a, uh, to a national park but for 80 you get access to all the national parks for a year so who knows, when we're in Oregon, we might want to go back to Crater Lake and some of those cool places. So we thought we'd just get the, the season pass. But uh, we're just going to go to the visitor center and then take you guys through the loop. Although I'm going to Google whether we're allowed to even show video from national parks on YouTube anymore. I think they've changed the laws. So if we're not allowed to show it, then we'll just tell you about it. Don't take them, Carol. Don't take them. We confirmed with the front desk that once we were driving in the park, we were not allowed to film anything and post it to YouTube. So we took the beautiful drive through the herds of buffalo and the rugged beauty of Theodore Roosevelt National Park before heading out into the nearby grasslands to find a place to camp for the night. It was a beautiful sleep, very quiet. I got up uh, at night and the stars were just spectacular. The Milky Way was going right over us. Uh, so yeah, we really enjoyed the, uh, the Badlands. They're not so bad, um, but we're up this morning fairly early. We can head into the little town of Medora again and grab a coffee. And then we're heading west and it's about a six and a half hour drive not including stops, so we'll see. We'll probably push and get into, uh, into Bozeman today. Reunite with our trailer and our gear. And it'll be fun to see the crew from XO if they're in, if they're still at work when we get there. Uh, the ones that aren't in Africa anyway. And yeah, let's uh, head down the road. So we just left Medora. Um, the coffee shop wasn't open until seven. And so we thought, well, that's a half an hour for now. So we, we'll get a half an hour up the road 
and uh, ground coffee in Montana. We just had a delicious breakfast here. It's called the Palace Hotel Cafe. Just a really small, old, historic building in a tiny town of Wibod, Montana, just, just over the state line from uh, North Dakota. So we're all coffeeed up, had a good omelet, and uh, getting back on the road. journey but uh, we're here I feel like we're coming home we spent a lot of time here in 2021 um, the kids were doing the apprenticeship with clay and uh, yeah but it's good to be here good to be back and uh, see the crew so this morning I am on cleanup duty I'm going through our trailer that we had stored for about a year and a half I think um, so there's a lot of stuff that we just kind of um, threw a bunch of gear in there and then took off uh, to get back. But as you can see, it's a lot of just <laughs> random things, a lot of food. So I can get rid of that. Um, but yeah, not too much. Like I thought there was a lot more in there, but a lot of it we don't, you know, really even need to use or we can give away some gear. And I think we're going to be doing a lot of that is just uh, giving some away and then tossing the rest. So we'll be taking the trailer with us and that has our fridge and our oven, everything like that. And we're going to be meeting up with some of our family along the way. So they're going to be using the rooftop tent on that. I'm super excited to be seeing them and to hit some of the trails with them. So let's get cleaning. So here I have a bunch of things that we'll be go I'll be donating, um, backpacks. This is garbage, that's stuff I'll be keeping, and then this will go into the fridge. So technically, these two boxes, that was it. So I'll just probably repack this into there, and we got rid of one box at least, and we'll come back and pick it up in September. But again, I want to thank uh, Rochelle and Clay for being so patient and kind to let us store this while we were figuring things out and getting our shop built up at the cabin to store this. So the stove is in good shape. I love the cook partners. You can put them through everything. I do have a lot of tidying up here. And eek! <laughs> a lot of food and stuff just fell through there. So, but we're getting there. So this here is all cooking over a fire. We do a lot of that normally. Not my old knife was the first effort knife I believe I should probably sharpen that but uh, yeah I think I need to clean this everything else stayed okay it's good I love this company bare bones out of Salt Lake I believe so it's coming along this is all our dry goods we kept it in here some of it I'll get rid of. That's our Joe Cole shower, our Dead Man Recovery. We have a few big torque uh, winches and our chainsaw up there in that area. And it's pretty much cleared. I'll probably take this over to the pressure washer, spray all this out. The fridge is all empty. And then uh, we're good to go. Okay, there's the boys, KTMs. They're in storage here in Bozeman, Montana. But yeah, I bet the boys miss their bikes. Can't wait to get back on the trail with those. So we got all the cast iron and all the, this is our pantry here. Um, and everything's all cleaned and organized. And I just need to clean the kitchen part and we're good, ready to hit the road. And in the meantime, we'll, we'll see you down the road. road.